Hello, welcome to my channel, I'm Adin. Today I'll be showing you how to do an insulation resistant test on a motor. Yes, so uh, what we're looking at right now is a 100 horsepower motor. It is used to drive a compressor. Yes, so uh, the importance of insulation resistance test is to check the condition of your is to check the condition of the insulation of the motor winding or, or the cable that goes to the motor so you can check both the cable and the motor at the same time or and when you do that if the reading that I get if you're not comfortable with it or it don't look good you can disconnect the cable and just check the motor windings alone so right here you can tell if it's the cable that is getting bad, the insulation of the cable or is it the insulation of the motor winding that is actually breaking down. So I'm going to do that test right now and let us see how it is done. Alright so I've turned off the breaker that supplied this panel here that's sent power to this compressor because you have to do the insulation resistant test on a dead circuit so you have to make sure that there is no present of power alright you can't do it while the motor is running so these cables now they are for the motor these cables lead to the motor line here these ones To do the insulation resistant test, you have to change your test lead over to these probe. So you have to remove, so you put the red one to where you have the positive right here. And also you can see um, insulation. Alright, so then you need to move over the negative, the black one to the negative we have the minus so the red one at the positive and the black one at the negative then you move your switch over to insulation and I can test it at 50 volts up to 1000 volts so I'll be testing this motor at 1000 volts alright so Next thing, when doing the insulation resistance test, you need to test each phase in respect to ground, meaning the negative test lead will be connected to ground and the positive will be connected to one of the winding. This panel is earthed right throughout. So this is the earth connection. So I'll just put this right here. Right there. And then I will put this lead on the first line that leads to the motor. This is the first phase and then I will hold on an insulation resistant test. So I will hold it for about 10 seconds then release to see the reading of the insulation. Same thing 
for the next one. telling me that this motor and the cable is in great condition because this multimeter can measure up to 2.2 2.2 um, gig ohm that is the maximum and the insulation the insulation is reading up to 2.2 gig ohm so right there I know that this the motor winding and the cable is in great condition all right but if you are doing an insulation resistant test and you're getting like 10 mega ohm or or let's say you're getting like 10 mega ohm 5 mega ohm 3 mega ohm 2 mega ohm then at that state you know that your your motor or your cable is really in a bad condition because look at it you're coming from when when the cables are new or the motor the motor windings are new or they are still good you're getting a um, maximum maximum reading which is 2.2 gig ohm but as the the state of the the conductors the insulation as the state of the insulation start to wear down and break down um those reading the value of those readings start to drop so at first they will come down to one point something gig ohm then you notice know, um it start to come into the 900 mega ohm 500 mega ohm then you notice they start getting 200 mega ohm 100 then just imagine that reading coming from so high all the way down to that point where you started getting like 10 10 mega ohm then at that state you know that your 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 cables are getting really bad are are the winding of your motor so what when you start get when you start to get those reading like let's say you do a insulation resistant test and you see a figure like 20 mega ohm at that stage you should start to get concerned and and you should identify if it is the cable or the motor winding that is actually getting bad because let's say you test the cable and the motor winding at once and you get if the cable is getting bad it could throw off the reading and if it is the motor winding that is actually getting bad it will throw off the reading so at that point now we start to get a low reading value you want to know which one of them is um is starting to get bad so what you need to do is you disconnect you disconnect the cable from the motor winding and then you test them separately so you will test the cable separately from the motor winding and then at that at that stage now you will know if it is the cable that is bad or it is the motor winding that is getting bad or if it's even both because even when my supervisor and i are doing those tests that's when i started getting those reading normally still it's at most time it's the cable that is getting bad the cable that leads to the motor but in very few instances we found that it is the, the the motor winding and we have to disconnect it and send it to get rewire all right so thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe i hope this video was very helpful helpful to you so Please show your support by liking this video, subscribing and sharing it with others so others can learn as well. Thank you very much.